Draven is your typical win lane win game champion. Most people know that all you need to do to beat him is to simply not lose lane. A Draven who doesn't get early kills cannot snowball and is then just completely useless as a result. Just heavily outclassed by the opposing ADC and Draven can't do nothing about it, right? Well, what if I told you that Draven actually has an innate comeback mechanic and that high elo Draven mains are using this to still carry games that look hopelessly lost? The reason this mechanic is so often unnoticed and overlooked is that most Draven mains have a, let's say, special mindset. If things don't go their way, they tilt instantly and keep running it down until they lose. I'd be very surprised if your general experience with Draven players would be any different. For some reason, the champion just attracts a toxic player base. But those Draven players who actually rise to the top are the exact opposite of that, as you're about to see. Anyway, before we go into the analysis, let's quickly talk about Draven's optimal runes and items so we're all on the same page. The challenger player we will analyze picks Lethal Tempo, Presence of Mind, Legend Bloodline and Last Stand with Magical Footwear and Biscuit Delivery secondary. While Lethal Tempo isn't the strongest keystone early, it still helps with 2v2 skirmishes in lane, but in teamfights it allows Draven to really shine. The thing is, playing teamfights with Draven is difficult as it is, so if you pick an early game focused rune page that does nothing for your team fighting, it will be even more challenging for you. I mean, it's not a secret, Draven is also an abuser of Triforce. A lot of AD carries are picking Triforce right now, and this rune page is geared towards that. Lethal tempo of course with perfect synergy, but also presence of mind for the mana regeneration during fights, and biscuit delivery for the early mana regeneration so you can make repeated use of that sheen effect. Legend Bloodline is more like a vanilla choice, Legend Alacrity would be possible too, but Bloodline allows you to be a little bit more bulky later on, while also taking pressure away from you to build lifesteal early. Early is relative here, Bloodline still needs time to kick into gear, but Draven won't buy lifesteal until third item as you're about to see, and Bloodline really helps in the time before that. Now Last Stand is an interesting choice. In my opinion, and in this challenger player's opinion, it is the best choice for Draven, but most people pick Coup de Grasse for the execute damage. However, when Draven goes all in, he oftentimes takes a lot of damage himself, so Last Stand will be a lot of value overall. A perma all-in playstyle also comes with its natural risks, and Last Stand turns that into kind of an advantage almost. Now for the secondary runes? Most people actually go for Eyeball Collection and Treasure Hunter, but this is just personal preference. Again, Biscuit Delivery helps with your access and W resets because you have just more mana so you can spam your Sheen more often, and Magical Footwear is a generally strong AD carry rune, similar to Treasure Hunter. While Treasure Hunter gives you gold outright, Magical Footwear makes you save 300 gold on boots, which all in all is the same thing. The Triforce Draven item build has already been very streamlined. You buy an early serrated Dirk, but you finish Triforce first and then upgrade Dirk to Collector. Afterwards you go Berserker's Griefs, Bloodthirster, Lord Dominic's Regards and Guardian Angel. This gives Draven a very smooth power curve at all stages of the game. Serrated Dirk is one of the strongest component items you can have, and Draven makes use of that perfectly because of his already strong lane phase. Triforce again has natural synergies with Draven's Axis and his W resets, and also with Lethal Tempo, making you surprisingly strong despite it being a Bruiser item. I mean, you know the drill by now, many AD carries are abusing this, for example Vayne and Ash, and Draven just does it too, and very efficiently. However, because Triforce's components are not that strong on Draven, you really want that early Serrated Dirk, and the best upgrade for Serrated Dirk on Draven is Collector. Not only are its stats great, but also the fact that it's more likely that you, specifically you, get the kill in a fight, makes this item very valuable, because of course you need the takedown to trigger Draven's passive. Bloodthirster had always been good on Draven because he uses lifesteal so well, and here it's an auto include too. Keep in mind, Draven's axes, the bonus damage on his auto attacks, fully applies lifesteal, making him very hard to take down once you have this item. Now every AD carry build needs a last whisper item, Lord Dominic's regards will be good in most games, despite the health you get from Triforce, but if the enemy has a lot of healing, Mortal Reminder is definitely your go-to alternative. For your last item, Guardian Angel can come in clutch because death timers in the late game are very long, and a dead AD carry in the late game means a lot of progress for the enemy. So yeah, Guardian Angel also an auto include on most AD carry builds really, you should know the drill. <laughs> Let's get right into the analysis. Draven rises and falls with his lane phase, he's one of the strongest early game bullies in all of League of Legends, and both teams know that. If he can get the snowball rolling, he can just run away with the game, so there will be a lot of chaos in the bot lane since both junglers try to prevent or expedite that. However, watch what happens here. Thank you. 
This is precisely the outcome you dread as a Draven player. Not only does he fail to get those kills, but his jungler also feeds double buffs to the enemy AD carry. As an early game champion, your only out is to actually win the early game to then snowball the late game. And, well, as you know, most Draven players are completely clueless on what to do if that doesn't work out their way. If they actually lose the lane, how are they supposed to continue? It is a tough situation and in fact Draven makes the foolish mistake of actually challenging that double buff as real, which makes the situation even worse. Not only does he go down, but also his lane partner Velkos. Okay, so your ideal game plan is ruined. Um, well, actually you have to just bite the bullet here. You're playing against challenger opponents, or well, opponents of your caliber, in this case challenger opponents of this player, and he knows he can't fight them anymore. Normally Draven would fight all the time in lane, trying to push his early advantage, but here he has to fall back onto regular AD carry behavior. Just farm on the tower and wait for the late game. But what then? Well, first of all, going for the safe farming playstyle is kind of like a comeback mechanic for Draven. Because when you stay out of harm's way and don't die, you can accumulate a lot of adjuration stacks which you can then cash in to come back into the game. By the way, the lane swap happened because Orianna wanted to make a play with teleport in the bot lane, but the location of Draven doesn't matter here. In any case, what makes this comeback mechanic more reliable than it seems is actually the global presence of Draven's ultimate. Don't forget, Draven's ult scales in damage also with its adoration stacks. I mean, seriously, look at this massive paycheck. Even after a botched lane phase, you can still get your items very reliably with this strategy. But of course, such a patient approach does come with its cost. Not only is the enemy able to make progress on the map by taking your towers, but also dragons will be very difficult to contest for you. However, the alternative would be directly playing into your enemies while they're at their strongest, which is a sure way to lose the game, so this patient approach is the only way. Of course, you can't control your teammates who might get frustrated and overextend, but dying with them is definitely not the solution. You have to play it safe and get your items first before you can challenge. If you lose objectives as a result, then so be it. You're doing all of this for a reason, of course. You are buying time. Your objective is to make the gap between you and the enemy as small as possible after they've gotten a lead, and once that happens, you can start to flank and teamfight again. Ironically enough, your patience might actually tilt the enemy because they are getting impatient trying to put their lead to use. And once the enemy's impatience gets them out of position, this is where you punish. But you have to keep in mind that these are just small victories. You need to take it one step at a time. Of course, the enemy will still get the objectives as long as they are stronger than you. Again, it is your job to remain patient, to farm where you can and wait for enemy mistakes without getting out of position yourself. Avoiding confrontation when you're weaker is really the best plan, but if your teammates don't adhere to this, well, that's on them. I mean, I admit they are able to make a little bit of progress there, but they still die and feed away even more gold. But by just applying pressure where the enemy isn't defending, Draven is making even more progress for free. Just get your stacks and stay out of trouble to keep the ball rolling. I mean, eventually there will come a time where the enemy's superior objective control forces you into a fight anyway, but this is what you've been farming up for. Sure, a lot of towers fell in the process because you needed to wait and play passively, but look at this bonus gold, more than 500 from Draven's passive alone. I mean, that's really a sum you can work with. And by staying afloat, using Draven's passive as a comeback mechanic rather than a snowballing tool, you can level the playing field for late game teamfights. Once you've acquired all your items that way, any kind of gold lead the enemy might have had is now meaningless, because gold doesn't give you more stats once you're full build. And this is exactly the way this Draven player was able to carry his team, despite the game looking like a complete loss. If you want to learn about other useful macro strategies that allow you to come back, then click the link on your screen right there.